We're starting a new series today in all three of our campuses. It's a, uh, it's a series called A Life of Stewardship. And today is the gift of your presence. You see, I see your presence as a response to how well we welcome each other. You are welcome here. I want you to turn to your neighbor, and this is the only time you get to point to him. Point and say, you are welcome here. Now turn to the next one. You are welcome here. You see, that's what a church is. A church is to be a place that's welcoming. And we want to look at that and what that means for us because we don't have a good track record with that. And I don't mean just us at St. Mark. I mean just the church at a, as a whole. You see, we should have open arms because that's how Jesus did. And I want, us, I want us to see what that means for us. What does it mean that you are welcome here? I'm not expecting you to be here. I'm not telling you it's your responsibility to be here, and if you're not here, I'm mad. It's not the way it is. God's not like that. God's got his arms open wide, and instead... He invites us to come. It was Jesus who said to the crowds, I'm not like them. He, he was pointing to the religious leaders. I'm not like them. He was saying, God's not like them. The religious leaders that were imposing these stringent rules. Do you realize there were over 630 rules? I think there was 637 rules that they had to follow every week. And if they missed just one, they were mad at them. And wherever they fell, failed, every week they had to come into the temple and offer a sacrifice for that that wrongdoing, that sin. And Jesus says, I'm not like them. I take all your sin on myself, all your failure, all your shortcomings. I am one sacrifice for all people, for all time. And he said, come unto me, my burden's light, my way is the way you were created to live. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way that you live life, is what Jesus was saying. When, that, when you get a grip of that, and, and that excitement that, that God wants you in his presence. Why we're told that in the scriptures that heaven rejoices if only one person turns to the Lord in faith. Heaven celebrates. Why? You're welcome in God's presence. So we as a church should be a church that welcomes all people. So what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Let's go through it. Uh, next slide, please. Let's, let's read this scripture. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He, God, always keeps his word. What the writer is saying here is God's made promises and he's going to keep them. He'll never break them. So hold on to that. If you've got to make a little verse of scripture that encourages you to keep going each day and like I, I I put it right there on my tachometer I don't look at my tachometer I got an automatic but I look at it all the time and I remember that he works together all things for good to those who love him it's a promise 
Let's see, the writer says, how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. He's writing to the church, see, and he's saying, let's come up with new ideas. Let's invent something new and different to encourage each other on how we can love and relate to not only ourselves, but to those who really need love because they don't see it day in and day out. They've got no purpose in life. They think the only way that you get through the day is to, is to show your force, to be ugly, to be powerful, because they've never been loved. They don't know what it is. Let's be inventive on how we can show them love too. We want to be a welcoming place for all people. The writer goes on, not avoiding worship, worshiping together. Hey, isn't it great? The band helps us in not avoiding worship. You get up Sunday morning, you say, yeah, I want to go. I want to, that song that you sang today, it, it touched me. It, it made me sing to the Lord. You see, that's part of creating a welcoming space. Why is it that we have this place with comfortable chairs and, and not an old wooden clappered building, you know, the, with the fans that, uh, that you would give them, and the old, old-time religion? Why is it that we use electronics? Because we're being inventive to encourage one another to worship together. He says, as some do, some avoid it. Some get caught up in all kinds of things. Football? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Yeah. Uh, what else? Anything that takes our time, that causes us to be so exhausted that when the weekend comes, the last thing we want to do is go somewhere else. But you see, as we become inventive, as we encourage others to be present, not miss out, that when you worship God, you're lifting God up. The writer goes on. Let us spur each other on. It's the idea of just, come on. I, I use the football as an illustration because today... Football has changed so differently than it was back in the 60s when I was a kid growing up. I remember Tom Landry was the football coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and he would walk back and forth on the sidelines. He had his fedora on. He had his coat and tie on, and he had no headphones. He wasn't in touch with anyone, but he was in charge. It's not like that today. All the coaches are different. I, all of them, they've got athletic outfits on. One of them does the dab. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of differences in today's world because there's an excitement in the air, behind the game. They're all in. They're, the idea is we are doing this together. They didn't have that idea first writer of the Hebrews did, spur each other on. Next slide, please. How about this? You belong here. That's what the writer's saying. This is where you belong. And to be a welcoming place, you belong here. This is your place. This is this belongs to you. You're part of it. With as much right to the name Christian as anyone. Now back in the time that this was being written. 
there were those who were Jewish like Jesus did you realize Jesus was not a Christian he was a Jew he was a carpenter's son And so the Jews got the idea that they were God's people and nobody else. And so when Jesus told the disciples that he wanted them to go into all the world and share the good news, that God loves them, sent his son to forgive them and give them a new life, they stayed right in Jerusalem. And in fact, it was the Apostle Paul who later came forward and began to say to them, we need to go out to the Gentiles. And they said, to the stinking Gentiles? Are you kidding me? No. And he said, yeah, the gospel is for everyone. God's arms are open wide for all people. They belong here. And as you read through the book of Acts, you find that you get to the 15th chapter, and they start struggling with each other. And, and some are saying, okay, okay, so we'll let the Gentiles come in, but they've got to be just like us and do the things that we do in our culture. And others said, no, no, that's not like them. And they were wrestling with it back and forth. They, they didn't know how they could be a group together. Have you ever heard the legend of the porcupines? A guy tells the story about a group of porcupines that were out one winter night and they were really cold. In fact, it was so cold that night, they knew they, would, they were going to die if they didn't find heat. So they started to huddle up together and they found the closer that they got, the more they stuck one another with their quills. So they'd back off, and then they'd get cold. And so they'd get closer together, and then they started getting stuck, and so they'd back off. And they found the distance between being close but not getting stuck and not being so far apart so they got too cold, that distance where they could stay together and get warm without sticking one another was called decency and good manners. <laughs> In one word, respect. And that's what the church had to learn. They had to respect one another. That's what we have to learn if we're going to be a welcoming place. But look at Ephesians. It says, God is building a home. It's what God's doing. Now notice, he's using all of us, irrespective of how we got here. It doesn't matter if we grew up in a Christian home or not. If, if the light came on years later, it doesn't matter, Paul says. Paul says, it's what God's building. He says, he's doing it. It's what God's building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now, he's using you. I want to tell you, out of everything that I've studied in Scripture, and I have studied Scripture diligently since 1972. And I, when I say diligently, I mean every day, all year long, every year since 1972. And the one thing that amazes me the most is this. God uses us. I'm like, are you kidding me, God? I can think of a hundred different reasons why you should not use me. I fall short. You could do a much better job. I mess it up. 
I step on people's toes. I, I don't follow through. I, there's so many things that I mess up. And you can say the same thing because as Paul says, we're all in the same boat. Why would God use us? He says it's Christ who's the cornerstone, and he's building brick by brick. That's you and me. What happens with a building when a brick is missing? One, two, three. You start taking out bricks, that building will start to fall. Do you think your presence matters? It matters. God's using you to be a place of welcome, to reach others with the gospel message, the good news. God's arms are open wide. Paul says we see it taking place day after day. Next slide, please. God invites us to participate in what God is doing. That's what amazes me. I don't know why he does it. It doesn't make sense to me because he could do it so much better. It's the same thing that when Jesus resurrected from the grave and Mary grabbed hold to him and said, I'm not going to let go. And he said, let go, Mary. I've got to go to heaven. I've got to send the spirit down so the spirit will fill every person. And Mary goes, no, 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 no. You can do it better. And God, no, God says, no, this is my way. I'm going to do it through the church. I'm going to do it as people begin to relate to one another and connect and love each other and welcome one another. Your presence is a response to God's invitation. If you're not here because of one reason or the other, I'm not coming after you and bashing you. I'm just simply saying you're missing out on what God is inviting you to. What he's doing in your life. Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury, says it this way. It's not the church that has a mission. It's the God of mission who has a church. It's the God who is at work in this world who says, you know what? St. Mark's getting it. They've got the idea. They're opening their arms to everyone. They're a place of welcome. Next slide, please. So I'm here today to tell you there's change in the air. Just like in football, things are not the same as it was years ago, so also in every area of our culture, things are changing rapidly. And people are changing how they worship. People are changing in how often they worship. And so just like the writer of the Hebrews said, we've got to be inventive. We've got to find ways to encourage and spur one another on. One way of doing that is noticing. Noticing people who haven't been here in a while. Noticing someone in your community that you can have a, a relationship with and can invite them here in different events. You noticing what God is doing in a person's life to say, yeah, maybe I can help too whether it's praying for them or providing for them. You see, in our world, we must reboot the church, and we must be the church. We must work together in groups, whether it be small groups or however, however to be the church out in the community because they're not getting it from other places. It isn't a business that's going to tell them about God's good news. It's the church. In fact, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, the church was a mystery. Nobody saw it coming. That God had this idea. He was going to put his spirit inside of people so that they would group together 
be inventive, encourage love, help out, worship together, and spur each other on. So are you in? Are you on board? Are you one who will say yes to Jesus? I'll be your man. I'll be your woman. I'll be your whoever. I'll be the one that you use. I don't know why you would do it, but I'm here. I don't have much to offer you because you are all perfect. Not me. But I'll let your spirit work in me and us. And I'll work in a small group to be inventive. And, and I'll work together to provide for people who are needy. And I'll work to, to go on a mission and to share God's good news. I'll work with people who are prickly porcupines with decency and respect. Because we'll work together. You belong here. You are welcome here. Because this is what God's doing. Pray with me. You're amazing, oh God. You don't relate to us according to our merit. Because we don't deserve it. We all fall short. We like to point our fingers at other people and say, well, I'm not like him. I'm not like her. It doesn't matter. You take all our sin, place it on the cross so that there's only one sacrifice for all time. We don't have to be burdened with coming to you every time to find forgiveness, you offer it all through Jesus and then invite us to participate with you. What a wonder. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might see Jesus, that we might be a church that welcomes others and that our presence would be a gift given back to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.